evening, ladies, gentlemen, family, friends, distinguished guests. My name is Will Thomas. For the last 10 weeks, I have been fortunate enough to be part of the Undergraduate Research Opportunity Program here at the University of Michigan. As Sandy stated, this is not a small program. Every year, over a thousand Michigan students come here and collaborate with the program in order to work on some of the most interesting projects the world has ever seen. But as most of you know by now, every project completed in this room and every project completed in the atrium was not completed by Michigan students. We're all community college students. And so when I speak to you today, I can speak, hopefully, for the voice of all my community college fellows when I say that for us, it's not an end game. For us, community college is a stepping stone. It's part of a journey. And so I wanted to take a minute today and talk to you a bit about my journey. My journey to college started in my junior year going into my senior year of high school. It was 2008, and the country was facing what was arguably the heaviest recession since that of the Great Depression. Like 5.8 million other American homeowners, our family lost our home in recession before COVID. Foreclosure is hard on anybody, but especially on adolescents. It removes your sense of security and your sense of knowing where you are in the world. I had four mailing addresses that year, and it was hard. And I confided in a political science teacher of mine at the time. And I told him, this isn't fair. I don't understand why this happened. What, what did we do? Why is it that 10 years of hard work in a home suddenly didn't matter to him? And he said, he said to me, Will, first of all, it's his life. Sometimes fairness doesn't play into the equation. But if you're interested in finding out more about what happened to me, there's a macroeconomics course I'm running in the fall, and I'd love to see you there. So begrudgingly, I dropped my third semester in Woodshop and signed up for my economics course. <laughs> Six months later, I had fallen head over heels in love with what is affectionately referred to as the dismal science. Fast forward another six months. I graduated from high school with a 2.2 GPA, no extracurriculars, and more woodshop baseball bats than I can really count. But I was driven. I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to obtain a PhD in economics. And so I enrolled at Washington Community College, just down the street. Two years have gone by, and that time I've been working full-time and attending school full-time as a student in order to pursue my PhD in Econ. My specific focus in economics is on behavioral economics, the study of how human behavior and human psychology, sometimes rational, sometimes not, plays a serious role in the way in which we engage in business. And no further, no better example of that could be found in my project. The title of my project was Networking Conflict, How Firms Fight. And what we attempted to do is to map out the way in which firms engaged in patent litigation. To give you a brief overview for those of you who aren't familiar, when you have an idea as a company, you patent. If another firm uses that idea without your permission, it's patent infringement, and you follow up with a lawsuit. Now, it used to be very clear cut. You filed the lawsuit in your country, or excuse me, in your city, or in theirs. However, there were some problems with that, and they found that uh, they needed to spread things out. So as of today, any American firm can file in any one of the 93 federal district courts from Michigan to Guam. This raises some interesting questions. Perhaps you are a small firm and you feel that you need to file at home. You know the judge, you have good access to legal databases, and maybe even the jury has a vested interest in making sure that the company in their town does well. Maybe you're a big firm. Maybe you know that the Eastern District of Texas has a much higher rate of success and you're going to fly out your entire if this seems a little dry and convoluted, it's because it is. So I'm going to take a minute to employ probably a more accessible analogy there. You are no longer you. You are now Miguel Cabrera, the seven-time all-star third baseman for the Detroit Tigers. And the MLB has changed the rules around this year. And they said, Miguel, you can choose to, you can choose to play wherever you'd like, any field in the country, for every game. Where are you going to bat? And so you have a couple options. You know that... In Michigan, you can play at Comerica Park. You know the field, you know the umpire. He's at least neutral, you might even like him. And the crowd goes wild when you step up. That's all well and good, but you've been doing baseball. So you know that Coors Field in Denver, Colorado has a significantly higher value. The air is thinner in Colorado, and so it makes more sense. You can achieve home runs, and whether the umpire likes you or the crowd is throwing hot dogs, points are points, and points win games. So if we can take that analogy and apply it to business, you can start to see some of the choices that firms are facing every single day. 
they have to decide whether they're going to go out of their way in order to trust the statistics to gain success or whether they're going to work at home. Our results aren't clear yet. My research started maybe two years into the project and we still have another two years to go. However, what I do know and what I can tell you both from the project and my personal experience is that neither me nor you nor firms do it by themselves. They network heavily. Firms rely on the attorneys they know at home, the communities around them in order to bolster them and give them strength. And that's what's pushing me through this program. I hardly even applied for the program. I was walking into the counseling office three months ago to tell my professor that I had given up. I couldn't do it. I'm not Michigan caliber, I'm not university caliber. It wasn't for me. And he passed me over a form that seemed like a fairy tale. I could go to the University of Michigan for 10 weeks and get paid to do research on the cutting edge of technology with the best academic minds in the world. And if it wasn't for him, and if it wasn't for my mentors in school, and if it wasn't for the countless amount of support that I've received, both from my fellows, and from Sandy, from Jerry, I can safely say I would be. So if you want to boil my research down to its most fundamental question, do networks matter? Absolutely. If anybody has any questions, I'm going to be here after the conference, and I would love to speak with anyone. 